Hi right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So we are talking about a game that I spoke about in a previous video, which I'll link at the top here. And that is obviously the day before. Uh, if you like what I'm putting up on the channel, by the way, please drop it a like and consider subscribing if you actually get anything from my content and it will help me out in the future. So what has happened since my last video on the day before? Well, nothing, nada. Absolutely zilch. Right, catch you next time when I discuss Half-Life 3. I'm kidding. A few days ago, the website for the day before went down. Now, this was a little concerning for me, and I'm assuming a, a fuck ton of others, as the day before is setting itself up to be one of the most anticipated titles in the genre. This Daisy Division style zombie shooter looks pretty freaking amazing from what we've seen so far, and I, for one, am hoping it's coming to fruition and is a genuine article. I would personally happily wait two more years for this game to come out if it came out with multiplayer in it, with minimum bugs, I'd be happy to wait because that's a game that I actually want. However, the website went down. It is now back up and I've been told it was down for maintenance and cleaning stuff up. So that should clear up that one. I'll link the website in the description below so you can check it out for yourselves. Now with the launch date around two months-ish away, we haven't heard much since the Nvidia showcased and this is another worry. Apparently there's a meeting soon and there should be some fresh info in a few weeks. In the meantime, I've got some frequently asked questions here and from the official Discord that may interest you guys if you're wanting this game as much as I am. So, on with the questions. Question number one. The day before clearly has a strong PvE component given its setting, but what can players expect from the game in terms of PvP? In the day before, we created the real world of the post-apocalypse, which means players have absolute freedom, complete tasks with other players, or go at it alone. You can meet anyone and whenever you want, act as you want. Cooperate with people or rob them. It's your choice and of course you can loot the defeated players so question two it seems like restoring and expanding a colony of survivors is a crucial element of the game how will this tie into the meta progression and the story the possibility to gather with friends meet and make new friends in a safe place will create many personal stories from those who will play the day before in Woodbury Survivor Colony, you can not only communicate with other players, but also talk to the inhabitants of the colony, take on tasks from them, and reveal more details about their world. Also, we're testing a system of reputation within the colony, so the activities that you do will affect your progression in the story. More information will be revealed in the future uh, on videos and posts, apparently, if they actually get anything new out. Question three, what can you tell us about the loot <laughs> and the progression. In the day before, there are no coloured items of different value. Everything is real. Weapons act as in real life. A light bulletproof vest will only save you from a pistol. Boots will not give you protection from shots. It is important for us to give the player maximum immersion in the world of the post-apocalypse. So that's a good thing. There's no tiered weapons. It's more realistic, as we say. Question four, it seems like vehicles and exploration are going to be an important part of the experience. Can you tell us more about this? Will building, repairing and maintaining vehicles be important mechanics in the game? Travel off road, go in the mud, but be careful. If you get stuck, you will become easy prey. The car can either save your life or become a trap. You need to keep an eye on the fuel, otherwise you can stall at the most inconvenient moments. We have carefully approached the details of the game. For example, in order to fill up the fuel, you need to pick up a canister and actually pour it into the tank of the car. The same way the car is repaired, you will have to go out and fix it. The game will include not only ordinary cars, but armoured vehicles. Just imagine we are walking together along the lifeless streets of the city and the skyscrapers once filled with people hang over us. We have the best assault rifles and then we suddenly see a running armoured vehicle ahead that notices us. To deal with such an enemy, you need a completely different approach. Question five, what can players expect from the day before where enemy variety is concerned? So they say, let's imagine that a zombie apocalypse has come to your city. What danger will you face? We at Fantastic believe that during a real post-apocalypse, 
there will be lots of wonderful people who will help others no matter what. But we are gamers, so let's move on to the second bit. But inevitably, there will be those who won't hesitate to use force. So in the game, you can meet zombies, real human players, human NPCs, but unlike the civilians of Woodbury, they are more likely to shoot you in the head before asking for a greeting. As for types of zombies, they are divided into realistic varieties, for example, by their physique. Zombies will react to sounds and rely on sight. And if you carry too many things, the sounds you make will be louder and you may be heard by the zombies even more. Each contact with the infected may be your last. It is important for us to convey the same emotions from meeting a zombie as if it happened in real life. Whatever that means. Uh, question six. Endgame content is obviously crucial in any game, such as this one. But what can the players expect from the day before in regard to terms of things like dungeons uh, and raids and things like that? They say, if you watched our last trailer, then you probably saw a strange corridor. This corridor is part of a large laboratory complex of the mysterious Azor Initiatives Corporation. In general, such PvE places provide an opportunity for us to show the game in a different light. It will be like a cold shower after a boiling hot day. I don't get it. For us, game development is an art where we have no limits to our imagination. Right, question seven. What are your post-launch plans for the game in the months following its release? Are you planning on adding an additional story or end-game content to the game soon after it releases? They say we have so many cool ideas for upgrades that screw seriousness. Sometimes when we think about it, we can start running and jumping out of excitement and too much energy. For example, we are all inspired by holiday events. Concerts with stars in the survivors camp, new locations, new weapons, cool skins, cars. There's so much fun you can do to brighten up post-apocalypse everyday life. Write what you would like to see in the comments below. As for the store, we don't care about that. It's not the main thing for us. Now that's a good thing. The store isn't the main concern. The main thing for our team is to create, they say, the greatest MMO survival game. Right, how large is the game's open world setting going to be? So they say the day before features an open world that you can freely navigate both on foot and by car without any loading screens. The focus is on the big city itself and its surroundings, but players will also be able to explore farms, meadows, small settlements, majestic forests, and snow-capped mountains. It is a hand-detailed world aiming to convey the romance of the post-apocalypse in which players could live their own stories. Roughly how long will the main story in the day before be? Everything will depend on your style of playing and updates. We're creating a huge world with many different stories, not just one main story. It will be a world where you can feel the atmosphere of post-apocalypse, live in and look forward to new stories that happen. Question 10. Do you have any plans for a pre-launch beta or demo for the day before. They say we will have a pre-launch beta, but only for thousands of lucky ones. It's great that our publisher has so many employees. Question 11. Let's talk about the footage that was revealed. Was it a part of the actual game and will the final game look like that? We intend to take the survival MMO genre to a whole new level. We are constantly improving the game, including graphics and animations. Every week our team makes new breakthroughs in order to give players the highest quality game. So the final game will be much better. If it looks as good as it does in the trailers, I think everyone's going to be happy with that. And question 12, do you have any plans to bring the game to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X or S? They say we will not be able to port the game to your NES, but we are considering the next-gen consoles. Just wait for a special announcement. They also say that they are very grateful for everyone's support so far. So I hopped onto the Discord to uh, to to find these uh, frequently asked questions and got some got some good answers from a lot of the community there and the Discord community itself for the game. So far, it seems actually really, really decent. The people there are helpful and they're actually really friendly and the general vibe is actually pretty, pretty damn positive. No one's overhyping the game either, which is great. We're excited for it, but no one's full ball doing your head in over the top about the game and everyone seems pretty laid back and chilled out. And it's, uh, it's quite a good place 
to go if you're interested in this game. So I'll drop a link to the Discord as well um, in the link below. Uh, go check it out because it's 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 actually a decent place to hang out. So unfortunately, update wise, as it stands, there's nothing major. Like I said, there is meant to be some form of meeting happening soon and I'm hoping we get some more details or anything really. With two months to launch, we are looking at needing something rather soon. So hopefully I've answered some questions you may have had though um, from the day before and maybe even brought your attention to the game in the first place. Either way, let me know in the description below if you're interested in this game or not. Remember to subscribe for more from me and like the video for the algorithm voodoo stuff as that will help me out. Have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.